Today we're taking a look at three types of heat resistant gloves and seeing how they hold up against a stove, hot steel, and a furnace. YouTube user Shashir wanted to see how long it takes for heat resistant gloves to burn. As someone who often uses and relies upon heat resistant gloves, this question is near and dear to my heart and I thought it was a great thing to test out, so that's what we're going to do. Here's the basic idea, each of our three types of gloves will be put to the test in different scenarios to see just how heat resistant they really are. First up, we have a pair of oven mitts. These things say that they are silicone coated cloth and I think they're supposed to be rated up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is going to be good for pulling most everything out of the oven, but not necessarily some of the stuff we do here on this channel. Standard oven mitts, about what you've seen before, pull things out of the oven, pretty low dexterity because all your fingers are together with just the thumb off to the side. Hello, how are you? That would make a decent whale puppet. Next up, we've got leather furnace gloves. These are usually used for furnace work or for welding. And so I'm pretty familiar with these. We've definitely used gloves just like this here on the channel quite a bit. They work pretty well pulling stuff out of the foundry, putting stuff into the foundry, but I have had some issues with that. Weirdly, we've had several pairs of these gloves where the right index finger getting the most heat exposure ended up shrinking over time until I could barely fit my hand into the glove anymore. Lastly, we have these, which are supposed to be barbecue gloves, they say. However, these are rated up to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. These say they're rated up to about 950 degrees Fahrenheit. These ones claim that they are heat resistant up to 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are the highest rated and I've never tried these out before. They're stretchy and they have sort of silicone pads on the front to give you some more grip when you're holding on to things. They're clearly knit. Like you can see the texture. It just looks kind of like winter gloves texture, although they're much, much thicker. We're going to test each of these, putting our hand on a hot stove, grabbing a red hot bar of steel, and putting our hands near or inside our foundry. I am actually putting myself at risk for this. I am going to be the test subject. I think we're gonna start with the stove. We're gonna turn up the heat and see how long I can keep my hand on the stove in the glove before it starts feeling really uncomfortable. We're gonna let it get red hot and then I am not gonna touch it with my bare hand. I'm gonna to touch it with a mittened hand and then two gloves. Start to get hot, let's see where this is at right now. Registering at 226. Now that is the surface temperature of the glass. This thing is using infrared. It can't see through the glass surface. About to hit 500 Fahrenheit. There it is, 500 Fahrenheit. At this point, a drop of water just explodes boiling, and then we get some drips moving around with the Leyden frost effect. We just hit 935 Fahrenheit, which is 500 degrees Celsius. Seems like the time to put our hand on it. All right, here we go. About to put my hand on a hot stove in the oven <laughs> mitt. Well, that was quick. So when it says it's heat resistant up to 450, maybe 500 degrees, you probably shouldn't put it down on a 950 degree surface. That was maybe like one second, I think. <laughs> did not last very long. All right, well, despite how long that didn't last, we're gonna progress on to the next gloves. Okay, here goes. That was mostly me reacting to the smoke I saw coming off, but it did start burning one finger over on that side. Ow, ow, yeah, okay. Just about one second, and it started getting too hot down the side. Everywhere that it was actually pressing hard against the glass, and my pinky finger was what was pressing the most, and that got uncomfortably hot very quickly. I am gonna try one more thing, and that's I'm not gonna press down on the glass, I'm just gonna hold my hand over the stove. Smoking quite a bit. Too hot. Leather gloves on the stove. More protection than the oven mitts, but not by a lot. Now we have these barbecue gloves, which in theory give us the most heat resistance. The one thing I wanna test is if it sticks, because if it melts and sticks, and I can't pull my hand away as quickly, that would be a huge problem. So I'm just gonna test with one finger over here. So we've got some burning. Full scale test. Here goes. Wow. I'm actually very impressed at that. I left my hand on there for several seconds. The other gloves got maybe one second before they started smoking and in one case burst into flames. A lot of smoke on the leather a lot of fire on the oven mitts. This was actually much better. I pulled my hand off when it got uncomfortably hot, 
but it was only just barely uncomfortably hot. The leather went from nothing, 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 uncomfortably hot, you've burned yourself. With this glove, it didn't actually do that. It got warmer and warmer, and I thought, um, this is now uncomfortable. Pulled my hand off, pulled the glove off, never got to the point where I felt like my hand was actually burning. I'm quite impressed. Let's try the next thing. All right, at this point, we have a steel bar that is glowing nicely orange. We're not just gonna go and grab right onto the red part of the bar. That's gonna burn the gloves. It's gonna be a lot like putting it on the stove, but faster. I don't wanna injure my hands. So what we're gonna do is compare and see how close we can get, how far up the bar toward that red part we can get without hurting ourselves. So I'm actually gonna do a control with just my bare hands. I know that the back of this isn't burning me, but I'm gonna see how close to the orange part I can get with my bare hand before it's uncomfortable. And then I'm gonna go through the other types of gloves and see how well they protect me. A Little more, not uncomfortable yet. Now getting, ooh, yep, just about there. The, the top half of my hand is uncomfortably hot. So we've got these two weld marks on here. And just below those, that's as close as I could get. That was burning my hand, uncomfortable to leave it there for more than a second or two. Yep, and then anything higher than that, it just burns too quick. All right, starting pretty close to what was the maximum with my bare hand. Now this right here was too hot with my bare hand. I couldn't handle it. So far, not really a problem with this glove. Moving up a little bit more. Oh, definitely feeling heat now. Oh, I got smoke coming off the glove. Still, uh, my hand's actually all right. My hand was actually doing okay, even though the mitten caught on fire. And now there's a big hole in it because I think some of the stitches burned. So that's actually pretty impressive. The stitches failed and it caught on fire and my hand was only, you know, warm. Woo, yeah, there we go. That's just all coming apart. Nice and singed, no longer good for cookies. All right, we're starting right here. I'm feeling nothing, not even warmth. Moving up, my hand is now like an inch and a half away from the orange. I see smoke on the glove. Oh, that got through. Because it's done that, I'm now kind of, oh wow. <laughs> I don't know how well you could see that, but the whole glove just shrank. Look at this. I'm not moving my hand, it's just contracting the leather. <laughs> well, that was flat a bit ago. My hand is actually okay. It's very warm. It's not burning me. I'm starting really close to the orange part. Oh, I felt it. Little spot on my thumb. Oh, I've got a hole right there. All right, I'm just gonna go orange part right on the palm. That is crazy. It's just warm. All right, now it's getting hot. Oh, it's on fire. Well, I think we found the stress point where that dies out. Despite that, my hand just barely got uncomfortably hot and that was pressing the red hot bar of steel down onto this glove for several seconds. I gotta say, I am really impressed with these things. When they say that they're heat resistant, they are not kidding around. Thousand degree knife's got nothing on that. That was well over a thousand degrees. That was probably more like 15 to 1800 degrees. But now I wanna see how these handle actually protecting my hand as it goes into the furnace. So I'm just gonna sort of carve out a little spot and I'm gonna reach in and see how they do. First, we got this mitten. This is the one that got burned on the stove. At least the seams are all intact. So I'm just gonna kind of lower my hand in, protected side down. See how long this keeps me feeling safe. One, two, it's on fire. <laughs> so an oven mitt that catches on fire. I gotta say, although I know I'm misusing it, I feel like that's not a good design choice. Leather glove. Let's see how this protects my hand, just sort of chilling out right in the hot spot. This is already doing way better than the oven mitt. Oh, the fingers are contracting. Oh, hot. As we saw with the other glove, when the leather heats up too much, it just contracts. And in this case, the first indication I had that something was wrong was that my fingers were getting squished. And our fancy barbecue gloves. 
Now this is the one that I have not melted any seams open on. Yeah, there's the back. It's pretty hot, not burning me hot, but all right, that's it. Oh, yep, there we go. That was just a little bit harder to take off of my hand. However, pretty impressed with that. Oven mitts, good for pulling cookies out of the oven. Not good for anything else. Don't touch a hot stove. Don't put an oven mitt in a furnace. Leather gloves, definitely better than the oven mitts. However, they do still have a tendency to light on fire or at least smoke a lot. They shrink when they get too hot and they really have a point where they go from it doesn't hurt to, oh, that's pretty warm, ow and just skips over, it's getting hot, and goes right into burning. These gloves that are for barbecuing or whatever else you're using them for, I'm actually quite impressed with. I would say the biggest downside is that it does actually slow my hands down a little bit trying to pull out. This restricted cuff, while it might be good for aesthetics or even functionality of using the gloves, I don't like that it's harder to pull my hands out. However, these did an impressive job of resisting the heat. There's one more thing I wanna try. The question that was actually posed to us is how long does it take for them to burn? So we're just gonna do a quick test and drop them down into the furnace and see how long it actually takes for them to light on fire. We're gonna just toss this on and see how long it takes. One, two, three, four, four seconds before we started seeing flames fly off of it. All right, leather glove, can you beat four seconds? One, two, three, four, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'm not sure this is gonna light on fire because we're already at like 25 seconds. And while it's definitely shrinking and shriveled and very hot and smoking, it hasn't caught on fire. So, how long did it take to burn? I would say after about six or seven seconds, I would have declared it as burning, but in terms of getting it to light on fire, it's lasted quite well so far. Okay, leather glove, will it light on fire? Yes. How long did it take? That was a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's so deformed. It's got like these stubby little fingers now. Oh, that really shrinks quite a bit in the heat. All right, fancy barbecue glove. How do you do? Four seconds with the oven mitt, a couple of minutes to actually get the leather glove to catch on fire. Oh, that looks like it's already on fire. That was quick. That's very surprising given how well it resisted heat before. That's on fire. I think it's the silicone actually caught on fire. That's interesting. So the leather glove resists catching on fire better. This resists just general heat better. Shashir, thank you for your comment suggestion. We've learned some good things about gloves today. Guys, that's all for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. That box at the top is gonna take you to our last video. You should go check that out. The other box is gonna show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you hit this bomb here in the middle, you'll be subscribed to the channel so you never miss a cool video. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get the notifications about it. And we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.